Hi, 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 and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Well, I've decided to put together a video showing how to build the flow testing apparatus that I'm going to build to test my Australian 3022V factory iron cylinder head. One cylinder head here that is unported, and I want to be able to test the flow of this versus the cylinder head that I've just ported. And this is just a simple testing mechanism using vacuum. I'm using a shop vacuum cleaner to provide the vacuum to my cylinder head and I'm testing the vacuum with a vacuum gauge which will be connected to the spark plug port in the combustion chamber that I'm testing. So pretty much all of the stuff that I'm using is easily obtainable from your hardware store. It's just some stormwater piping, some PVC piping, bolts to hold the sealer over the combustion chamber, some silicon to seal everything, and you'll need a way to step it all down to your shop vac or your household vac if need be. So you'll need to find either some clear plastic laminate or I'm using just some chipboard laminate that I had lying around to save me a few dollars. Right, you'll just need to measure the surface area of the combustion chamber you're going to be doing the test on and you need a sealer that will cover the combustion chamber as well as the cylinder head bolt hole locations that bolt the cylinder head to the block. You need to make sure that uh, you're picking those up as well on the piece you cut, so then you can buy four bolts and you can bolt this to the cylinder head after you've puttied this. This will have to be puttied, uh, so then it seals. All right, the other thing that will happen with this is Whatever your piece is that you're going to um, suck, connect your shop vacuum to, has to be also placed into this sealer. So I'll be using a hole saw to cut this for this stormwater step down pipe I've got here. This is a 90 millimeter orifice at this end and a 40 millimeter orifice at this end. Then I was able to find a 25 millimeter elbow, which will be siliconed into the end here, and then that will in turn connect to where my shop vac goes in, okay? And basically what will happen is uh, this will be simulating a piston, if you like. Piston, uh, the vacuum that a piston creates, it's a big pump. We're going to be basically pumping air via our vacuum cleaner through the combustion chamber, and we'll be measuring how much a vacuum we get via the vacuum gauge, you'll need an adapter that will go into your spark plug port that you can screw in and then connect via a hose to your vacuum gauge. So the vacuum gauge is probably the, the thing that's not quite as easy to uh, find. You might have to get one online or if you've got a local parts supplier, auto supplier, you can get one from them. That's a kit that comes with adapters and a hose, etc. cetera. They're, they're pretty cheap, about $50 for the kit and we're going to be reading the vacuum off our uh, spark plug port as we're opening our valves and closing our valves based on what our camshaft is. So I've got to just basically now um, mark my bolt hole locations on, on this, drill this, so then this can be uh, bolted to the cylinder head and I also need to mark where this guy is going to be over the combustion chamber, picking up as much as the combustion chamber as I can. So I'll probably just get the center of this just by crossing it there, getting the center and basically drilling the hole right in the center for this to sit over, over the combustion chamber. Um, then you'll need a bit of putty or blue tack or something once the hole's drilled in this, once this has been siliconed onto this um, and this has been siliconed in and this is basically all one piece, you'll need uh, some sort of putty or blue tack or something like that to seal around the combustion chamber for when you bolt this on so you've got a nice seal then you'll need to connect up your vacuum gauge and you'll be able to get some readings on vacuum that you should be able to convert to percentages of what the differences are in the exhaust and intake on the unported cylinder versus the ported cylinder. It's all going to come down to what your shop vacuum cleaner, um, whatever the last component is of the hose that's what you're going to need to find and maybe work back from there to find uh, piping that will fit into um, this type of scenario that I'm showing you today. Once you put all of your uh, combustion chamber 
build together. This is what it will look like. Well, this is what mine looks like using this step-down setup. It's all silicon in. It's uh, drilled to go over the combustion chamber and my uh, holes are located here to go through my cylinder head to bolt this onto the other side, onto the combustion chamber side. And that's roughly what you're after. And then your shop back's going to go in here to uh, create the vacuum. So the other slightly more complicated part of setting up this flow testing apparatus is you're going to need to build something that will enable you to open and close your valve and take readings of that with, say, a dial indicator gauge and a stand. Right, so you're going to need, I reckon, a, a dial indicator gauge to really be able to measure how far you're opening a valve. So obviously you're going to need to know your cam specs and then you can uh, open your valve through that spec from close all the way to its to its max lift. So what I've ended up doing is, I'll just deassemble this, is I started by finding a 7 16th bolt that fitted into my pedestal here. Uh, I found that, and then I found another slightly larger bolt um, that I cut the head off, and I just welded, this became a stud if you like, and I welded it to the top of the bolt that's going into the pedestal. Initially, when I when, when you screw this in, you'll have to run two nuts. So then you can lock that so you can actually wind this in. This is what I have to do with my rocker studs anyway. There's no, there's no way to um, turn my rocker studs into these Clevelands. You need to use two lock nuts anyway. So that's what you do. You'd use two lock nuts, get this stud into the pedestal, right, put one nut on. Then I just found a bit of junk, 30 by 30, box here, okay, it, roughly in the center of whatever the length of this was, I drilled a hole, and on one side of the hole, uh, I welded on the, a nut that fitted a bolt that I can now screw through this, okay, so I found a bolt and a nut, the nut got welded on this side of the box, the thread just comes through like this now, okay, this is going to push our valve, what you'll need to do to get your measurement right between your pedestal and your valve is I just got a, a pair of calipers. Once I've got this stud in here, I just got a, a pair of calipers and I just measured the distance between the center of this stud and the center of my valve guide. And that's what determined where to drill this hole. Okay. So once you've got that sorted out, you'll have a way to basically open and close your valve and a way to measure it with a dial indicator gauge on the top here. So you're going to need a dial indicator gauge. And you're going to need at least a dummy spring. I can just use a dummy spring. This will be more than strong enough to hold the valve closed. Uh, and I just got that from my local hardware store, right? So my valve will go in. I'll compress that. Put my um, put my hat on there and then my keepers basically onto that spring. So this is just how I'm going to set mine up. It happens to be that when I lie one of the cylinders on its side, it's the right height to attach my suction assembly here. So that's how I'm setting it up. You could build a little frame or something to sit the head on, but I'm just going to do it this way because I'm lazy and I'm looking for a quick, easy way out. So all that's happening, guys, is the stud, the, the bolt that I've welded on the bottom here, we just wind that back in. Don't want to snap that off, but we do want it tight. We can unlock that, wind that right down, take this guy off. I've already got the dummy valve in place, on we go. Lock that down like that. and then we can go a measuring. And then we're going to be able to just wind this down and open our valve at its different stages of lift, like so. Okay, and with a dial indicator gauge, we'll, we'll, we'll place this on the top 
of our scenario here. Before I do that, I'm going to have to just basically uh, level that off. It's a little bit rounder. This is just a. This was just some thread that I welded a nut onto, so it's a little bit wild around here. I'll, I'll uh, get my flap disc on that and level that, so the dial indicator gauge has got a nice level surface for us to test basically the flow as we open the valve. That's what it looks like just dummied up. That's what it looks like with the assembly we've just been looking at with the uh, dummy valve in place, uh, the dummy spring, should I say, sorry, in place of my valve in place, and that little mechanism in place ready to open the valve and take measurements. I hope this has been helpful for anyone who would be interested in trying to build something like that. That is as simple as it gets. Until I see you in the next video, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.